Hey everybody! Welcome back to Northern Lion Place of Binding of Isaac Attributh. Win 33 was two wins ago. Well, yeah, technically, yes. Win 34. Uh, we start with Sacred Heart this time. Good God. DXGWA861. Uh, win 34 was very easy. I think we'll just grab this. Are we on an XL floor? We are not, so let's go in here. Um, this run is obviously exceptional so far. Uh, the virus is good, and then... Sacred Heart is incredible, and I, I mean that, you know, without any hyperbole or exaggeration associated with it. It really is one of the best DPS items in the game, and it, it functions just fine in a vacuum. You know, we don't need... We might as well do our due diligence there, and see if we get something better, but... Um, we don't need anything else to make uh, this run tick. The good news is, oh my god, we also have, uh, I just noticed... Bloody Penny, which is great for our HP if we were concerned about that, which I, you know, not really, but sure. Uh, it's a nice thing to have regardless. Uh, the great thing about Isaac is that there's pretty much no doubt that we will get other stuff, because that's the, you know, central gameplay loop that the game pretty much functions on. Hermit or Emperor? I mean, the Emperor is better late game. The Hermit might be better early game, but it's probably functionally similar. We're either going to use it as a teleport card to get out of boss rush, or we're going to use it as a teleport card to get out of, like, a, a boss trap room or something like that. So, um, pretty much as long as we just keep the the train on the tracks at this point, we should be good, you know. The, the run, and autopilot gets a bad rap. Everyone's like, oh, he's running on autopilot, he's running on autopilot. Yo, can you do me a favor and not fucking disrespect autopilot? Millions and millions of software engineers worked on autopilot systems to make our world a better place. So, you know what? We're not gonna shit on autopilot on this run. I'm gonna make myself the the change I want to see in the world. I do want another spacebar item, but disregard. It's not that valuable right now. We don't have to worry about it, but I'm gonna worry about it nonetheless. Ooh, yeah, the parasite's fine as well. Health down is bad, but life goes on. We still get all the other benefits of the halo. Um, we're we're not on autopilot so much as all we have to do is follow the sat nav. You still gotta drive the car, you know, the navigation system's not turning your car for you, at least not yet, Elon Musk. But it's telling us, um, you know, in 100 meters, turn right. Turn right onto Go Fuck Yourself Boulevard, you know? So, we still have to turn right, but all we have to do is, you know, we don't, we don't have to find the path to victory ourselves. We've been placed on the path to victory, and really we're just going straight for, you know, 80 kilometers here. Ooh, what's a kilometer in freedom units? I don't know. Okay, you know what? You can, you have the chance to be the change you want to see in the world as well. If you live in the United States of America, do all of us a favor. And I'm not saying that you're, oh, uh, these stupid Americans cannot handle, no, okay, you know? Just learn the metric system. We can be better than this. We can be the generation that gets rid of the imperial system. It makes no sense. Why are we still rolling? It's you know what it is. It's that the country. Ah, I think we're just gonna go with this. I want to make this point tactfully here. So give me a second. I want to be careful with it. The reason we can't have America switch from miles to kilometers and you know ounces, which is another measurement that makes like even less sense in my opinion, to grams and kilograms, is because you've all, you're in too deep, right? That's it's never too late to change. It's like a 60-year-old man going to the doctor, and the doctor's like, you really gotta make some lifestyle changes, or, you know, you're not gonna live as long as you could. And you're like, I'm already 60, why fuck with it? No, you should fuck with it. Learn the metric system. I am going to take a Thame here. Uh, a little, little deer on HP, but that's okay. Ooh, this is a little scary now. Um, I mean this sincerely. You might think I'm joking and I am playing this up for humor, but I'm not joking. It's a very serious issue. Um, I'm actually scared about our HP here. I don't know where else we're gonna be able to get money from. Uh, uh, the disregard. But where, how, we should still do it this way. Grab the petrified poop. Hopefully get something. Um, we didn't need to take a Thame. That was, that was a little too cutesy. But it's really a Thame plus the bad trip pill that fucked us. Um, I think we should be okay, but let's, let's head downwards. That key is not gettable without a bomb. And we can get a bomb from our shop, maybe, but then we don't have enough money for a spirit art, plus we don't have a key to get into the shop in the first place, etc., etc. So if we think we're gonna die, teleport. 
Stay away from that champion. <laughs> but here's the thing. Every other country on Earth has decided that this is the way that we should do things. The metric system makes sense. It's easier to teach. It's easier to conceptualize. And I'm not saying that because, you know, I grew up learning the metric system. I grew up learning metric and imperial. You know, I know that there's 1.6 kilometers per mile. I know the easy shorthand is that, you know, it's 3 miles in 5 kilometers. I know how much I weigh in kilograms and how much I weigh in pounds. I know my heights in, uh, in inches and my height in centimeters. And I'll say that as much as uh, my brain has, you know, previously mostly been about feet and inches and pounds, it makes less sense. I really do think it does. Fuck this, dude. Give me a single spirit heart. The one time you don't want the goat head. Don't speak to me about this room. Is this what I get for soapboxing about the metric system? I'm sorry, okay? We'll work through it. Ooh, that could have been bad. Please be a health down. It's not a health down. Okay. I'm gonna take- Oh, it's balls of steel! Okay, all's forgiven. Alright, so now we're on autopilot. We've won the run. And this time I use autopilot uh, with love. Anyway. But you can, you can do it. I know what you're thinking. Oh my god, there's so many street signs to change. The best time to switch to the metric system was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. You know, let's get it done together, people. If I ever become Prime Minister of Canada, which obviously I'm inadmissible for a number of reasons, uh, mostly because I have said things like, Courtney loves clitoris over the course of these videos. Um, we need both of these. Sacred Heart Mom's Knife is wonderful. And now we have even more HP, which is I'm, I'm very thankful for. We'll go back for all this stuff. Hopefully we can get Guppy going here. This has the potential to be one of our best runs ever. You might be saying, oh, you ruined it. You ruined it. How did I ruin Sacred Heart? The central tenet of Sacred Heart is homing and damage. And we still got all of that with Mom's Knife, even though the homing is slightly worse. Or markedly worse, even. Um, the swings on this run are ridiculous right now. But if I ever become... Prime Minister of Canada, which I, you got to go follow the money in that situation because I don't believe I would ever want to be. So some shadow organization is having me run as some sort of figurehead. You know, they've kidnapped my family. Now, if I wasn't admissible before, this this is going to seem like some very um, convenient dialogue if I ever do end up running, which I don't believe that I would. But anyway, um, you uh, you can be damn sure. The first order of business for me would be like, we're imposing economic sanctions on America until they switch to Imperial. And maybe we can trade something, like maybe we'll stop shipping our products with French and English on the label if they're going to be imported into America. I understand it's confusing. You're like, Boisson, what's that? All I wanted was a drink, and this thing's, I'm looking at the one side, it says Boisson. Doesn't make any sense. I understand. We have to give and take. You know, that's the way our relationship should work here. Um, we already, yeah, we already got that. We have goat head, of course. Oh, I didn't need to do that because I want to go back to our item room. That was silly of me. Anyway. And it, like, I already talked about astronauts. And I think that being an astronaut, you know, you should basically get a medal of honor just for applying to be an astronaut. Because it's, it's a horrible job that you need to be extraordinarily qualified and still have like a 1 in 8 chance of dying. Maybe a little less than 1 in 8, but you know, a, a high chance of dying relative to a lot of other jobs you could be doing with that level of education and expertise. But I actually think that being the leader of a nation is a much worse job. And you really, like people are always like, she could be president one day. Why would you want your son or daughter to be president or prime minister? Do you see the shit people say about them online? Like that is horrible to deal with that day in, day out. You know, people hate them. It's an incredibly high-stress job. You don't get paid that much. And then also, you know, you are that job forever. You know, it's not like if you work at McDonald's as a fry cook, you're always a fry cook. But, you know, Bill Clinton will always be former President Bill Clinton, you know? And, I mean, it's a good thing in some ways, and it's a bad thing in other ways. It's hard to change yourself. You know, no one has ever been president and then gotten more famous after for something else. I, like, don't wish for your children to be prime minister or president. It's prestigious, and it's selfless, and it's noble, I think. You know, I, I do think that 
pu- the life of uh, public service, especially at the uh, at the top echelons, is very noble. Even if a lot of politicians seem to prove the axiom that you know absolute power corrupts absolutely, um, I think that there's noble there's nobility in the intentions. I guess is where I'm getting at that from. Um, and I understand that you know there's power that comes with it, and some people really desire that. But dude, if I you know maybe one day in the future I'll have a child. When I look down on that child, I'm not going to say, he or she could be president one day. I'm going to be like, man, I hope that you win the lottery or become like a Hollywood actor, because that life seems dope. You want to be the president? Are you kidding me? I mean, you know, it's your funeral if you want to be president. But why would you choose to be president when you could be not even Leonardo DiCaprio? What, you have your choice. You could be like president of the United States or you could have like Bradley Cooper's life. I'd rather have Bradley Cooper's life, man. Less prestigious. History maybe is not going to... Re- oh, this is pretty great. History might not remember you as much as they're going to remember every single president of the United States. Unless you're like, you know, Warren G. Harding. In which case, maybe history will remember you uh, more as Bradley Cooper. I mean, he was in the Hangover films. But for your own, like, you know, first off, wealth. And then people who hate Bradley Cooper, they're not like, he's a corrupt, he should be in jail. You know, they're like, I don't really like him. I think he's overrated. You know, that's that's a level of criticism that's easy enough to deal with. Like that, the ideal job is definitely not president of the United States. Prestigious, absolutely. And you know what? If you're concerned about money, you will just be able to write a memoir of your experiences in office and, and live off the royalties. No doubt about that. I mean, pretty much set for life, I suppose, if you're, if you're a former American president. However... You're also set for life if you're a, like, big-time Hollywood actor. That's definitely ideal, man. At least if you're looking for the combination of, like, high wealth, low stress. I'm not saying that these actors, by the way, have no stresses in their life. Everybody's got stress in their life. I'm just saying, compared to the stress of, like, should we order the drone strike or shouldn't we? You know, that's a little different than, like, ugh. I really don't want to be typecast as handsome man who fucks hot ladies. You know, I'm, I've got more depth to my career than that. I didn't spend four years at NYU just to be typecast as millionaire dude who fucks hot ladies, okay? So, yeah, mamas, please don't let your boys grow up to be presidents. We need more Hollywood actors is what I'm trying to say. I feel like there's, there's a lot more jobs like that. That, that people are like, you know... The jobs that are, like, at the intersection of, like, shit in all different directions. That's how I feel, like, about newspaper reporters sometimes. And this is not me disparaging newspaper reporters. Quite the opposite. Like, if you ever read the comments on, like, a local news section, there's always, like, Hey, hey a local lemonade stand makes $500 over the summer. Good job, kids. Way to show initiative. And then in the comments, there's somebody like, Wow, slow news day. Oh, I hope these kids are paying taxes. Blah, blah, blah. Like, thanks, Obama. This is the Obama administration. Soon all of our jobs are going to go to 10-year-old kids. Because, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, man. Well, we got the mom transformation, rotten baby, and the ability to fly here. And we're about to go down to the depths, too. Uh, five minutes ahead of schedule, so this is ridiculous. But, you know, like a newspaper reporter doesn't make a whole lot of money in most situations. And people, like, as soon as they publish their work, some people, not everybody, some people go to the headlines, or read the headlines, and then form their opinion on what the article's about, and go, well, fuck this person. This person's blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, man, you recognize, like, this person has to have a love for journalism. They could pretty much like be doing anything else you should have like a certain amount of respect or at least decorum about this but i suppose that's just you know some comment sections in general luckily not mine you guys are all saints some sometimes you call me a racial racial slurs and uh i'm not sure if it's you know something you can chalk up as just a difference in uh humor and uh sometimes you say hey you dummy uh, you, you freaking moron, I tore my hair out watching this video. Like, how can you be so stupid? And then I look at your YouTube profile and you've liked like a thousand of my videos. And I'm like, how is this person so rude to someone whose content they actually enjoy? But just chalk it up as, you know, wanting some attention or having a bad day at sixth grade or something like that. And then, you know, we move on with our lives. But I feel bad for the newspaper reporters. And the presidents is what I'm trying to get. Like, Obama, if you're watching this, you look... 
I'm not trying to goad you into this. You're a busy man, and you're going to be busy for the rest of your life. You're, you're going to be as busy as you want to be for the rest of your life. Let's put it that way. But if you want to just come to Vancouver, have a coffee, have a beer, take a bike ride on the seawall or something like that, go see a Canucks game, no pressure. I'm not going to ask you, you know, about Benghazi. We can just hang out and you know, learn learn a little bit about one another. I'm really hoping that you'll endorse me for my campaign. Uh, I'm running for Prime Minister of Canada, 2032. Is that actually... Yeah, yeah. No, wait. 2031. But who knows, because we're all... You, I, one thing I admire about America, at least you guys have been on a, a four-year election cycle for a long time. We were on a four-year cycle, and then there were some no-confidence votes, and then, you know, it's all become... It's a thing. I'm just going to take the Pact, because I'm not sure how my HP looks right now. I'm going to use the Strength card in here. Uh, I think our HP is fine, by the way, but I figured why not, you know, test it. Oh my god, what the hell was that? This is beautiful. And that, that goes for any former president, you know, of the, you know, five or six of them that are that are presently living. Uh, uh, who? Did Jimmy Carter. Gerald, Gerald Ford is still alive? Maybe not. Jimmy Carter, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama, not former president yet, but you get the idea. Um, George W. Bush, George H. W. Bush, that might be it, unless I'm forgetting. I'm, I'm not sure if Gerald Ford is alive, it doesn't really matter. It's just the trivia addled part of my brain getting confused right now, but um, that, that goes for all of you. If you want to come see it, I don't know why you would want to spend your time. You know, you have much more to teach me than I have to teach you. But if you'd like to, by all means, you know. There's nothing really I can offer you can't offer yourself. But if you want to, you know, watch uh, the Sedin brothers tear it up with the Swedish line mate Louis Eriksson this season, you know, we I can go on StubHub. I don't have season tickets, but I can go on StubHub. And, you know, we can all even spring for lower bowl if you want, even though that's where the fucking suits sit. Doesn't bother me. All right, what were we even talking about here? I don't remember. It doesn't matter at this point. This this run is stupid good. Uh, a little concerned about the lack of uh, dodging that I've been displaying here, but you know we do have uh, we do have Gimpy uh, and Epic Fetus. I'm gonna choose to ignore Epic Fetus, but I did think about it. HP is still great. This, and I mean this genuinely, may actually be the most overpowered Isaac run I've had in, in maybe six months. It's up there, at least. Uh, it's it's ridiculous. Every single deal with the devil has given us something we wanted. Um, and, and great stuff. Some of the shops have been good. Uh, Boss Rush tried to give us Epic Fetus. We just got Cricket's head on a whim, like, for whatever reason. This seed is bad in 100. I'm going to take this as some sort of cosmic reward for me, uh, you know, having done something great in a past life or, you know, maybe all those 30 cent donations since I bring my own plastic bags to the grocery store have added up and, and the charity that our grocery store supports has been able to, you know, purchase an apple. And then this is the universe's way of rewarding me for that, in which case I say, I didn't do it for any reward, but I do appreciate that, you know, it's nice to be recognized. I, I do consider myself quite a philanthropist. Um, let's head down. Well, Guppy's head, I guess, is what we'd want from that. We have got a single penny, which is substantially worse than Guppy's head, but... It looks like win 35 is... Like, 100% guaranteed. We certainly do not want that. Man, our damage is actually disgusting. We will take Little Brimstone. Like, we barely touched um, the pony there, the Headless Horseman. And he died, like, instantly. We also have, like, a not great spacebar item, but one that is exceptionally good for mapping. Like, especially with car battery, we are just, like, blowing the doors off of this run. And actually, we're doing a ton of damage with Toxic Shock. Like, sometimes I don't even need to hit enemies to kill them. Certainly, I don't need to hit them for more than, you know, a single tick of damage. So the single tick of damage apparently does, like, 5,000 damage right now. And now I am kind of in, like, not speedrun mode to be like, let's get this run finished, but just to see, like, how fast we could possibly pop off on this one. You know what? I think it's faster if we don't go um, with Satanic Bible. I think it's faster if we stick with what we got. 
Yeah, it looks like it's probably this way. I bet, and this is not, you know, I, I don't want to deprive you guys of, uh, of commentary. Hopefully for every, you know, 20 minute Isaac run, there's a 45 minute Isaac run sitting in the can waiting to be, you know, uncorked for the next seed. But I will admit, like, this one has been super easy so far. I think we can finish this run in under 19 minutes. And that's not me hoping, but I mean, I'm pretty sure that we just beat the cathedral in, like, 20 seconds. So if we don't have a curse here, we'll just crack into our items. We already know where we're going. Don't want the scissors, don't want the hourglass. We'll take the leech. Deadshot. I mean, it's probably faster for us to just not even take these items, but we'll take them. This is almost inarguably one of the most powerful runs I've ever had. I'm stoked, you know? It's it's a, a thrilling run to be a part of. Apparently, we've gotten good luck upgrades as well because we're getting items. Or we've gotten an item, at least. And if you hate seeing ridiculously overpowered runs that are over in, like, 18 minutes and 30 seconds, well, I do apologize. But it's a fun run to be a part of, I'll tell you that much. And this is the third Isaac run I've recorded today. They've all been super powerful. So that's not to brag. That's just a moment where you take a... Uh, a look at the Isaac gods, and you say thank you, and what the fuck are you gonna do to punish me for this run? Because right now, this we, we finished the chest faster than we would have had to to get to Boss Rush. So, and we did all of Boss Rush. Thanks for watching, I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button, even though it was a short one. Um, it helps out a great deal, and of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.